some are good people. So I'm currently at the beach. I'm just getting a little glimpse of that. I'm at the boardwalk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's fucking lit, son. But anyway, um, I want to explain Bitcoin uh, just as an example. Um, you know, it's relevant for a lot of things, but Bitcoin's a good example of, of why it's a bubble. Uh, more specifically, why it's a speculative bubble, and really, I guess, I'll just cover some of the dynamics of that. I've already kind of covered it. I, I've made videos where I talk about the investor cycle. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm just going to use Bitcoin as an example to illustrate it. Um, you know, so right now, the, the price of Bitcoin, I think it got bid up to like 35000 It's back down to thirty. Um, and some people try to say that, you know, the market cap of Bitcoin is, you know, the current price that it's trading for uh, times the outstanding number of, you know, with stocks it would be shares. But in this case, it would be the outstanding number of coins that there are. So, you know, you multiply those numbers, and you get some big old number like, you know, half a tr trillion or something like that. And it's like, uh, uh, you know, like, I don't know if that's accurate. Um, and I'll tell you why it's probably not accurate. Um, because as the price of Bitcoin goes up, um, while it's going up, you know, people tend to hold on to it. And there's going to be less people selling it, you know, as it's riding up, you know, for the most part. Because it's an appreciating asset. Most people who are, you know, trading Bitcoin right now are, you know, investors who are trying to make money. So, of course, they're going to be holding on to it while the price is going up. So, there's really a limited available supply to trade to begin with. And the more more it goes up, the faster it's going up, the less likely people are to sell it. So it's like a really, there'll be a shrinking supply as the price starts going up. And, uh, and at the same time, and here's where the dynamic comes in. Um, well, the point on that is that, you know, it's a limited supply, it's a limited amount of trades that are trading at whatever the current price is. And to try to say that, you know, every other coin, you know, in, in the whole supply is worth that, you know, that's a that's a misnomer. Um, you know, at any given point um, for, you know, any given security or Bitcoin or anything like that, there's literally a certain number of bids to buy it at certain prices. There, There's an active demand you know, asking, you know, literally you put a, you, you, there's bid and ask in, in stock trading and in cryptocurrency trading. There's literally uh, bids, which are, you know, asks, asks, whatever, ask orders or whatever, um, is the ask price um, to, you know, buy or at least try to buy uh, any given security or cryptocurrency, Bitcoin in this case at any given price. So so there's an active demand that can be seen. It's literally what people are currently trying to buy that cryptocurrency at. And that is a real representation of the worth. If there's not, you know, enough demand to buy out every single coin, then to say that every single coin is worth the current price that a few people are buying it for, that's a totally erroneous thing it's just so stupid to see people say it over and over with a company you know they try to say that and even that is a misnomer until maybe you know uh let's say another company comes in and buys every share at that price there's only so much demand to validate a claim like that you know really the few shares that are trading right now let's say with Bitcoin, um, or not, not shares, but the few coins that are trading right now. So I, let me let me point something out to you. Inter, inter, intervention. We got these people here. This woman's wandering around with her dress, looking like she can't even walk straight. I'm thinking they're about to come up this ramp and interrupt my video, and I'm like anticipating that while I'm chilling. I just, I just thought I pointed that out to you. Hopefully they get on. No, they're coming this way. It's about to be a stupid, annoying thing. It's the dog staring at the people. There's all types of bad energy right here. First time at the beach. Very nice. Okay, good. Um, trying to make a video. And we got this type of stuff going. I hate this type of stuff. But I'm trying to make a video. That's why I hate. You'll see some of my videos where I'm like stuttering or something stupid.
people look like they have like no sense. Look at the camera, look at me, stay out of my way. Simple. Alright, anyway, um, yeah, there has to be enough demand to validate any claim that, um, you know, any number of shares of a company or any number of coins in, in any given cryptocurrency are worth a certain price. You know, the only validation to the claim that any shares of any company or any coin are worth any price is, is the fact that somebody will actually trade either dollars or something else for it. You know, it, it's a worth, though the value of something is determined in trade. And I mean, that's relevant beyond just, um, you know, goods when they're priced in the economy where people trade dollars for them. It's beyond just, um, you know, dollars for any given security and any given stock or cryptocurrency. It's like literally with any type of trade, you know, it could be Pokemon cards. You know, if you're willing to trade this card for this card, you know, right there in that situation, you know, it's, deter it's dependent upon the two people and how much they want the other thing and, you know, and you know, what the other person is willing to accept. It it's a, like, per transaction basis, you know, that, like, value is kind of determined. And usually if there's, like, something that, uh, you know, a lot of people want um, and there's a there's a supply of that you know you can kind of uh, average that out you know because it's a lot of people that want it a lot of people offering money for Bitcoin for instance and so you can kind of say you know generally here's a market and uh, you know this is the going price in that market but it's still just a small sample of the total amount of uh, you know outstanding coins or, or shares in a company so, so it's a small sample that uh, is being used to try to say, you know, that, that the market cap of Bitcoin or any given company is, uh, you know, the number of shares versus the going price. And that's just totally erroneous. It's just it's not real because there's only so much demand. And, you know, there has to be enough demand to validate that claim. So it's just erroneous, first of all. Okay, but let's look at the bubble. Okay, and we're kind of just going off. From, sorry, there's a lot of distractions going on. I just want to make sure that people weren't distracted. They kind of people get me off. But when they when they don't look like they like see you and they like start wandering in your direction, it's like I feel like I have to get distracted to like you know wake them up from their freaking zombie like state. And like it's just it's ridiculous. It happens so often whenever I make videos out in public. Here. But I like these type of settings. But um. Let's look at the bubble aspect of Bitcoin. Like I said, whenever the price of something starts going up, people are more likely to hold on to it. There's gonna be, gonna be less people selling, but at the same time, while it's going up, more people are attracted to it because it's an appreciating asset. And so there's gonna be less of a supply available, more people coming in, more of a demand. And that shrinking supply, growing demand is going to rapidly increase the price. The faster it starts going up, the faster uh, or the, the more likely people are to hold and not sell, which means the supply is going to shrink more, and uh, the more people are going to be attracted. It's like this self-squeezing thing. It's like uh, supply start available, supply starts shrinking. And I explained this in my video about the uh, investor cycle. The available supply starts shrinking, and uh, you know demand increases and it's just like this rapid like it's like a like a ratio of available supply versus demand like shrinks on this side increases on this side and just causes the price to skyrocket and eventually you know there'll be like a, a maximum level of people who are willing to buy any given security you know stock or cryptocurrency that they'll look at that you know and they'll say okay it's, it's kind of a high price and, and people will generally maybe you know not be demanding it as much you might say demand starts to dry up and uh, when that starts happening the price increase starts slowing and all of a sudden the people that are holding on riding the way up they all decide hey maybe it's a good time to sell because you know it looks like the price is slowing down you know uh, don't look like it's increasing anymore I want to get out of this position so what happens um, after people already were kind of deciding you know they don't want that anymore that's why the price is slowing down because there's not so much demand you know causing it to shoot up um 
you know, people decide to start selling. So it's a decrease in demand, increase in supply, which causes the, you know, the, the competition, I guess, uh, balance to uh, kind of reverse. And then you see the, the price start to like level off. And then, you know, everybody's like, okay, it's leveling off. It might, you know, they think it's time to get out that position. So everybody tries to dunk. And then when the price really starts to level off, there's like no demand for it because it's not appreciating anymore. So everybody dumps, total decrease in supply, almost zero probably. <laughs> uh, not literally, because nobody would be able to sell at whatever price it is. There's nobody to buy. But, uh, you know, demand starts evaporating, um, supply gets dumped, and the price just plummets because nobody wants to buy it. The demand, you know, people want to buy when it's appreciating. And, uh, you know, if, if it starts leveling off, you know, nobody wants that. It's like, okay, it looks like it's about to go down. Who who, want, who in the right mind is going to buy it as it's about to go down? Like, idiots maybe, but other than that, there's, you know, not very many people. So, total decrease in demand. Um, while everybody's dumping, increase in available supply. You shift the ratio from being a whole bunch of, or a little bit of supply, like a squeeze supply and an increase in demand as it's running up, which causes it to run up, uh, to no demand, total increase in supply being dumped on the market, and then it just it just bottoms out. It plummets. Nobody's there to buy it because it's just going down. The only people that are going to buy are people that think it's going to bounce usually at a certain point, and uh, you know, and they usually just guess on that. And sometimes they'll buy at a certain price <laughs> and you know think it's going to bounce. And that's usually what the people as the price is going down. Those are actually transactions. Those are people uh, selling you know, their their stock or cryptocurrency at any given price. And it's actually trading hands, you know. Um, so as you see the price plummeting, those are actually transactions where somebody's buying because they think usually it's going to bounce at any of those points. You know, that, those are usually the people buying while it's going down. They're, they're buying at a place they think it's going to bounce at. Um, and that could be for a number of reasons. You know, they might think it has intrinsic value or something. I don't know, but you can see it usually just total decrease in supply everybody dumps price plummets because there's barely anybody to buy and uh eventually you know it might come to a point where demand comes back in because it just goes so low bottoms out so hard you know that people are like okay this is a good price i think it's gonna bounce and uh you know the demand comes back in uh putting bids in placing bids placing orders um you know and then and then the price starts going up uh, it's, it's, it's just a ratio of supply and demand. It, it, there's actually a more specific function there. It has to do with uh, the type of orders. There's market orders and there's uh, limit orders. Um, when people said market orders, it'll go up. Uh, actually, I don't need to like, explain that, but um, there's a relevant, there's details there that are relevant. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I call the investor cycle, where it spikes up because of a squeeze in the supply and then an increase in the demand. And then, uh, you know, where it kind of levels off because it starts to just go to like crazy levels where people are like, I don't know if it's gonna go up anymore. So they just like kind of back off of it. Demand slows down. When demand slows down, people start to sell. Prices level off. Demand sees that and they're like, okay, it's definitely not going up anymore. It looks like it's about to, you know, people call it pump and dump. I mean, that's just generally what people call it. But that's really what's going on. And you can see, what you gotta pay attention to is that supply squeeze on the way up and then the disappearing demand on the way down when people are trying to dump. And it's just, that's why you see these spikes in all these charts that go up, go right back down. It's a supply squeeze. And you can actually look at the, well, I was gonna say you look at the uh, trade volume. Uh, it, it depends because you know sometimes there'll be a lot of trade volume and there's just so much demand it'll it's still more than the available supply so you'll still see it's still like uh you know that that increase in demand even with an increased supply will you know still kind of push the uh the price up and uh you'll still get that effect i got some more people here that are about to walk into the beach on their sand Anyway, um, so that's typically what
what happens. You get that like squeeze going up and then it just totally lets loose on the way down, you know. There's only so much demand. Um, to, uh, I guess, you know, sustain certain levels. Um, um, good, good, good. Other people, they just wander up and are like act like they don't even see you trying to do something. Like, what the heck? Dude? But I mean, it was kind of bugging that bad. I just knew he was gonna be a type that kind of wanted some acknowledgement, you know. I figured that would happen right there. Anyway, does that make sense? The uh, the, uh, the speculative bubble, the investor cycle. That's kind of what it is. Um, there is specifics with the. Uh, Smart people, I really, you know what, I don't even really feel like putting this out, to be honest, because it's kind of proprietary at this point. <laughs> like, like, a lot of people don't understand this, the dynamics of it. Um, I figured this out years ago, and really, I'm trying to, like, open up a fund. I understand a lot of dynamics, you know. This is just, like, what I would consider, like, a fundamental part. Um, just a, a pattern, you might say. It's the best, like, it's why I see spikes go and go. But there's underlying things that, that make a difference. There's news with companies. There's you know, uh, there, there's value investing. That's something I'm looking into and stuff. So, so I want to open a fund, put a lot of this knowledge to work. Um, but right now, like I don't know of anybody that, you know, I, I, people understand what pump and dump is. Like everybody's like, yeah, dude, it's pump and dump. Uh, um, a lot of people do. Some people don't. <laughs> but uh, I haven't heard anybody really kind of describe the details with the uh, with the uh, you know squeeze of the volume on the way up with the increase in demand where you know that attracts more demand versus you know and then the leveling off and then there's just the dumping and you know disappearing demand on the way down and then like I said there's the specifics with the I don't even want to explain the extra part I've already explained it actually in another video but I don't know if I actually made it public um that's how it works, you know. There's a squeeze with the with the uh, volume that's decreasing as it's going up because people are holding on to it for the most part. They're they're like less likely to sell. That squeeze in volume increase demand while it's going up because it's appreciating. Investors are looking for appreciating assets. You know, it's just that ratio change, and it's it causes the price to go up. And then at some point, people start looking at it and they say, "Hey, man, I don't know, man. This looks kind of." Uh, sketchy so the man starts to slow down dry up as I say and uh, as it starts to dry up people start to you know decide that's a good point to sell at they start dumping on the market trying to sell and uh, that's an increase in supply and leveling off uh, leveling off prices going to uh, you know, the increase in supply is gonna cause prices to like I guess level off even more and then eventually you know you start seeing that peak it's kind of like a roller coaster like whatever Clink, 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 goes up to the top and it goes, ooh, it's ready to freaking go over the edge. And, uh, and that's when everybody says, no, nope, not buying right now. And everybody thinks that's the time to sell. There's nobody to buy because investors aren't stupid, you know, so they're freaking, uh, uh, nobody's trying to buy, you know. The demand disappears and the, uh, you know, people trying to sell, they're kind of, you know, chasing. They're trying to find somebody to buy it. And uh, I'll explain the last part. There's there's market orders. Okay, market orders will, if somebody tries to sell uh, with a limit order and the price is like rapidly decreasing, that order might not fill. And because it doesn't fill, the person gonna be holding a depreciating asset as it's going down. Um, that's gonna be bad, right? So they're gonna rush, they're gonna chase to try to sell. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna click a market order, which will go down to the next lowest um, ask price um, that somebody set with a limit order on the 
buy side. And uh, whenever that happens, when it starts going down and like, you know, the limit orders that people set to try to sell get blown blown by, they start to do market orders and that causes to go down to the next lowest ask price. And, uh, and then that will be registered on the actual, uh, you know, chart, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that's what actually causes things to go down really fast. It's kind of just like, you know, people just dumping, trying to get out of position like, really quick. And, uh, you know, it, their, their limit orders to sell get blown past. So they, they're like, oh crap, what do I do? Market order, whatever, you know, I'll sell it out, whatever, just get rid of it. And people just dump it on there like that, especially with market orders. That's really, market orders are what really drives these, uh, you know, rapid run-ups and rapid, you know, drops in prices because it goes up to the next highest ask price when it's going up or it goes down to the next, uh, you know, bid price uh, going down. And, uh, and that will be literally, it'll just like incrementally go down and it'll be tracked. And, uh, you know, there's different brokerages. There's, there's, I think they call it, uh, uh, what's it called? I don't know. There's, there's like different brokerages and is it L2 data or something like that? I don't forget. I forget what it's called, but, uh, there's a type of data that, uh, you know, kind of says, you know, how many people, uh, are asking this price or, you know, putting up bids for this price or whatever. And, uh, you can see that. You can see kind of across the board with different brokerages and stuff like, you know, who's asking for what price, and, you know, the volume at that price. You, you can look into that. And, uh, but you, you can like study that on a run up and run down. You can like go through past market data and see that. And uh, you can probably look at actual <laughs> the orders that I'm talking about with market orders versus limit orders. When stuff runs up and runs down, there'll probably be an increase in market orders on the, you know, on the spikes up and down, you know, when it's relatively vertical. Um, and that's just some basic stuff, dude. That's really basic. It really is. I, I consider that like fundamental stuff. Um, it's kind of proprietary, so I might not even share. I might put it out there, but guess what? Nobody watches my videos right now, so I'm just like, it's just like, it's funny because it's just like there, and I know it's like more insightful than a lot of people. Like, I'm on Twitter all the time. I'm seeing like dudes running hedge funds are like, I don't quite understand what drives the value of Bitcoin, but I'd like to know, like, dude, it's just a speculative bubble. It's, that's what it is. It's a pump and dump. It's what I call the investor cycle. I identified this like three years ago. Um, and I hadn't heard anybody else talk about it. Really, I was going to invest in Bitcoin, and that's why Bitcoin is like so central to this, uh, this theme here. It's because I was actually going to invest in Bitcoin. That's when I really started to analyze because I didn't understand what made it move either. I was like, why does it move? Like, I didn't understand. So I had to like really like think about it. Like, what is causing it to move? I just had to analyze it. Really, it wasn't that hard. And I was like, oh, that's what's going on here. You know, people, you know, I just had to like, I guess, think like, you know, put myself in the shoes of investors and understand what's causing, you know, the uh, you know, price to move or whatnot. And, you know, uh, I remember... <laughs> I was out. I was out by uh, over by my mom's house over in Houston, Spring, Texas, and uh, I buy this little like nature area that I, that I always go to to chill and like meditate. I remember I was out there and it was like freaking like oh that's how it goes. <laughs> like it was like a eureka moment. It was like an epiphany, you might say. And uh, I remember that I was I spent like multiple days kind of like thinking over. I was like man like what makes it move man like I gotta know before I throw my money in there. I was really trying to because it was like this spike. That was back in like 2017. It's actually like January right now, January 4th, 2021. So it's like, uh, it's a while back. <laughs> but uh, you know, I made videos, it's already on YouTube, it's been on YouTube for a while. People just, you know, I don't know. it's whatever, it's out there. So. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that. You know, cryptocurrency, I mean, Bitcoin for one could keep going up. I mean, it's not impossible, you know, it's, uh, I was thinking a good strategy for Bitcoin would be like, if it could be adopted for actual, like, you know, commercial transactions, like if it could carry that load, but it couldn't. And that's why I had to make like this lightning network and they're doing these forks and stuff. It couldn't, but that I think would sustain a, uh, a value, you might say, because people 
are trading for it at that value. That would be an increase in demand by the way of you know, goods and services being offered for it. I talked about that on my YouTube channel. Um, um, a lot of people, a lot of the, you know, I guess cheerleaders for Bitcoin, that's what I call them. Some, they call themselves gurus, maybe, but uh, I call them cheerleaders. You know, a lot of them say hold or hodl, hold on for dear life. You know, and when they do that, that kind of makes the spikes less prominent. You know, and when people are like, they panic and they sell, yeah, it's going to cause things to dump and prices to plummet if they, you know, so so they tell them to hodl. And uh, that, that causes a relative stability. And so as it goes up, you know, if people hodl and they don't sell, it's probably not going to go back down. And it can go up indefinitely. Like, it really can. But, you know, there's a like a fundamental question of the value of, that cryptocurrency if it goes up to like let's say you know what they call a market cap of like a hundred trillion dollars you know like is that blockchain of you know just uh like the ledger with, with like these increments that are kept on a freaking cloud or whatever is that really worth a hundred trillion dollars is like when all it is is a, a ledger like is that realistic it doesn't sound realistic and uh you know, so that's like a fundamental question I think needs to be addressed because it can go up and up and up. And like I said, it's usually representative of, representative of just a small sample of people trading at a certain price. So it's like, can you really even say that the market cap is blah, blah, blah based on that small sample? And I mean, if people believe it and they actually trade, you know, goods and services for it at a certain price or at a certain value, you might say, or if they trade, uh, you know, trade another type of currency at that value, you know, whatever the current price is with that small sample. You know, if, if people cash out slow enough, you know, and everybody's believing that, then you're not going to see the fact that, you know, there's only so much demand because people are cashing out slow enough while there is demand that it doesn't cause that drop in value. So it's a, uh, it's a relevant concept and it's, it's a it's a relatively fundamental question i think people should ask themselves because it could go up indefinitely it could just have a market cap of like some crazy valuation but is it really worth that the whole thing is it's just a ledger it's not real it's nothing you guys the same question of fiat money right now you guys the same thing about gold right now you can ask about a lot of assets in our economy and it's, it's fundamental stuff, man. And I think it's questions people want to start asking when, when they start to understand this stuff. And that's what I'm trying to teach, man. So it's a good case study. And uh, I hope you got something good out of it. <laughs> um, I don't know how much time I got on this uh, video here. So I guess uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Because I think I got some much practice going away. I'm going to get out of here. I'll talk to you later. Be safe.